I'm Larry Bunner, and um, I put this presentation together uh, a couple years ago and have given it a couple times um, in an effort to make me understand better how this QT diagram works and how it can be utilized for soaring hang gliders. And um, first of all, one big caveat, I am not the expert on this. I, I tried to break it down and make it as simple as possible for myself. So there are perhaps a number of questions that you're going to have that I won't have answers to. However, um, I can show you what I, what I do want to show you is to kind of dissect the diagram itself because it's very complex when you look at it the first time. It's got a lot of lines on it that appear to be meaningless. And then I can show you at the end, the most important part is where to get access to the skew T diagram and how to interact with it to help you evaluate the soaring conditions at your site. And that's the thing that is most valuable to me. I am a little bit of a weather freak in that I've been looking at skew T's for a long, long time. As early as the middle 80s, when I had to go run up to the National Weather Service office in Rockford and get them to print them out for me, because we didn't really have computers back then that could access that information. Um, so having said all that, uh, I would ask that if you do have questions, maybe kind of hold them back and see if I answer them as we go along and, and then hit me with the questions. Otherwise it might take a little bit longer than it normally would if I were to just run through the Prezo itself. So I haven't done this in a while and <clears throat> I was hoping that I'd get time to look at it this morning, <laughs> but I didn't. So, um, so this is an introduction to understanding the skew, skew T log P diagram that most people call the skew T. Uh, the diagram was used by meteorologists back in the, I think it was as early as the 40s to determine the atmospheric stability and to assess the weather conditions around the country to help predict bad weather. Um, this QT diagram gives a snapshot of the temperature, dew point, pressure, which is altitude, and wind in the atmosphere above a particular point on the Earth's surface. The data is obtained from sending weather balloons up at two times a day at various locations across the U.S. And then that data is fed into computer systems now that model uh, interpolate the weather around the country so that you can pick any airport, just about any airport, put in its Latin lawn or its uh, skew T diagram moniker ID code and you can get a profile of what the weather is going to do for that day. Um, so the, the weather balloons actually carry instrument packages up and they retrieve them afterwards and they reuse them over and over again. The concepts in regard to the skew T are that, number one, when a thermal leaves the ground, it, it is treated as a parcel, a parcel of hot air. This parcel will continue to rise as long as it's hotter than the surrounding air. And once it reaches the same temperature as the air that surrounds it, it stops rising. So it's like a bubble rising in a lava lamp. You see it bleed, you know, and that's how they characterize the thermal. Once the parcel leaves the ground, it is isolated from all heat sources, adiabatic, so that it rises only on the merit of being warmer and therefore lighter than the air around it. And the parcel temperature uh, decreases steadily as it increases in altitude, so it cools as it leaves the ground. The dew point is the saturation temperature for water and air. It's where, um, the air will condense. The water vapor in the air will condense. The dew point temperature decreases steadily with an increase in altitude also. And the dew point the dew point temperature decreases slower than the thermal temperature does so that the temperatures end up converging. And this stuff, you know, 
it's gonna glaze your eyes over here initially and that's okay when you once you've read it over a few times then it'll start making more and more sense um, when the thermal and dew point temperatures become equal then condensation occurs so and that's when you will see that a cloud will form if the thermal stops rising before it reaches the dew point temperature no thermal I mean no cloud no condensation so it'll be a blue day so one of the best things that this QT will predict is whether you're going to have clouds or not and so yesterday when I said all the models said no clouds I looked at the QT and the, so I cheat a little bit this the QT told me we we're gonna have clouds that and the fact that we had moisture on the ground yesterday morning were good indicators that there was enough uh, instability that we were going to have some cumulus development during the day and we actually had some really good cumulus development um, so we'll go on to the next page the skew t diagram parameters so there are five fixed curves on the diagram there's pressure or altitude and it's logarithmic there's temperature and it's skewed hence the name skew t they had to skew the temperature profile in order for it to make sense on a diagram um, and we won't go into that but uh, that's that's the reason there's something called the constant mixing ratio and uh, if you ever understand it I'd really like to hear about it because I, I've looked at many, 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 many documents trying to get a good handle on this thing and I'm, I, I'm just not smart enough. The dry adiabatic lapse rate, you've probably all heard of that before. And then the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. So once condensation occurs, the cooling changes with altitude, the profile changes with altitude, and you'll get to see how what the differences are between dry and saturated. And then we plot four variables on this QT diagram, the temperature, the dew point, the wind speed, and the direction. Okay? Can you unplug my laptop? Right here? Yeah. So this is the diagram. So you can see it's a mess. It, it, it's not easy to uh, interpolate or understand by the way it's uh, showing on here. However, I will point out a few things. The upper left hand corner shows wind direction and speed in knots. Okay. You see pressure on the left hand axis and it is logarithmic so as the numbers decrease they get wider and wider apart, farther and farther apart. On the right hand side you see uh, instead of pressure you see altitude in thousands of feet starting at the bottom, 1, 5, 10, 15,000, etc. And you also see wind speed in knots, 0, 50 to 100. And then I'll go through the curve now, uh, one item at a time. So pressure altitude are horizontal lines ranging from 1,050 millibars to 100 millibars. And as I mentioned, they increase logarithmically up the y-axis hence the log pressure. The pressure values are on the left and the corresponding altitude is on the right. So those two brown lines are at 700 and 800 millibars, which correspond roughly to 10,000 and 6,000 feet. Do you see that? So 800 millibars is probably maybe 6,500 feet or seven, or I'm sorry, 60, yeah, 65 or, or 7,000 feet. So th that's the altitude line. The temperature <clears throat> line are solid lines that slope from the lower left to the upper right in 10 degrees Celsius increments. And we're going to talk in Fahrenheit today. So when I do the interactive part, it'll be in degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the skewed portion. The constant mixing ratio, and I'll, I'll define it for you, it's the ratio of the mass of water vapor in the air to the mass of dry air. They're slightly curved lines that represent lines of equal mixing ratio. 
All right, I'm moving on. <laughs> the dry adiabatic lapse rate is listed in, in blue, and this is the decrease in temperature with height as an unsaturated bubble parcel of air rises adiabatically. It's slightly curved slope from lower right to upper left. And just hang on, we're going to get there. The moist or saturated adiabatic lapse rate is the rate of decrease of temperature with height as a saturated parcel of air rises pseudo adiabatically. It's curved slope from lower right to upper left. So you can see the difference. Here's, here's the dry adiabat, here's the saturated adiabat. So I now cover it again, but as the parcel rises, it's going to cool adiabatically. And once it reaches saturation, in other words, the temperature reaches the dew point temperature, you're going to get cloud formation. And then that cloud will cool at a different rate of temperature, much slower. All right. There's a depiction of the dew point, and that is the temperature to which a parcel of air at a constant pressure becomes saturated without any addition of water vapor. 